Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you all hear me out there okay? Yes, sure. Okay. I'm Pastor Wayne Hedrick. I'm the pastor at Luminary United Methodist Church up the road, and I, I guess I'm kind of the, the proud pastor of the, what happened here? I have to tell you that, that when this all started, I, I thought we'd end up with a used double wide down here. That's the truth. And uh, when, when the idea was brought to me, and I am amazed at the way Jesus Christ worked in Amen. each of your hearts. Amen. Because you made a difference. You've made a difference in this community. You've made a difference in this world. And God love you. That's all I can say. God love you. Uh, if you bow your heads, we will pray. Merciful God, we come together in the name of your love to celebrate that love. The love you sent into our hearts. We praise you for the compassion you have placed in these same hearts. A compassion that builds community and connectedness in a way nothing else can. Thank you, Lord, for moving the hearts of so many people in this quest to express our gratitude and love to Virgil. And in a way to all veterans who have come home. And those who have not. Help this day to be a day of celebration of your love in us and use this house as a sign of your light in this community. We pray with hearts full of compassion and grace in the name of Jesus the Christ and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. If you'll face the flag now as we take a moment to bow. This is an emotional experience for uh, many of us here today. Um, there, early on, Rick and I were having a phone conversation to plan our course of action here. We called it Project Virgil because we were helping a Marine Corps veteran whose name was Virgil Sitzler. <laughs> then Rick suggested we have an overall name for what we were doing. We ended the conversation by agreeing to think about it. <laughs> Moments later, I happened to look next to me on my desk and there was the church's September newsletter with a message entitled from Pastor Wayne, entitled, Love in Action. This is it right here. Amen. I called Rick right back and we both agreed we had our name, Love in Action, Project Virgil. Amen. On Thursday, October 14th, the GoFundMe account was up and running. We got $60 the first day and reached a staggering $440 by Thursday, October the 21st. That was the day we decided to inform Knoxville TV stations about Project Virgil. And that started the ball rolling. The driving force behind Project Virgil was the following verse, Matthew 22, verse 37. When asked, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. We would not be standing here today if we had not, not kept Jesus Christ first and foremost in every decision that was made. There were many prayers. We prayed for direction 
and for results. And we always gave thanks when those prayers were answered. Many tears of joy. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Many tears of joy have been shed during this process. Most of them in amazement at the things that were happening. We were seeing miracles. And here's one more thing we are proud of. We were able to shine a light on a Marine Corps hero who needed help, and today we celebrate a community that has rallied to help one of its own. Amen. Finally, here at Luminary United Methodist Church, we are dedicated to sharing a message of love and hope throughout this community. The message of Christ crucified, buried, and raised from the dead. Amen. In other words, we are shining the light of His love. Thank you, everyone. Amen. You're the man. <laughs> Speak up. Good morning. Good morning. Good. Morning. Good. A couple of things. We toiled yesterday at working on the rebuild. Kendall Lumber offered us a 150 foot roll of house ramp. Seemed like a really good idea. And, uh, we took the house wrap, cut it in four sections, 37 foot deep, long, and three of us held it together and stapled it together every feet four times, turned it over on its back, and put duct tape to secure all the seams. We got it up on the house last night. Uh, Brother Wade got up on the house and walked around until we got it all up there. And then about 10 o'clock last night, we looked at the weather forecast, and they're calling for thunderstorms at 2 o'clock, 80% chance, 70% chance. And it was all hanging here, uh, rolled up, and I had visions of water in there and it coming down on everything. We had it tied to the cardboard, so that was an ugly thing, too. So we didn't do that. Uh, me and Kathy came down at midnight last night and cut it down and pulled it down in the dark. So the, that plan, uh, that was plan B, and it didn't work out too well. So we're still going to have a rebuild. And you might ask how we're going to do that. You're supposed to say how we're going to do that. How we're going to do that. <laughs> Here's what, what happens when you have a rebuild. You know, the general response is, ooh, ah, followed by a so everybody got that? Everybody understand? Okay, here's the key. Everybody shut your eyes. Hold them real tight. Uncover the house! Great job! A whole bunch easier. We should have thought of that plan several days ago. All right, uh, I'd like to thank all the donors to the Virgil Project. Uh, there have been so many generous, gracious donations and people, uh, not only financial, but the gift of labor and materials, both. Um, it doesn't matter whether you gave a dollar or a thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. make it right. be good. <laughs> and Bill, Bill is the worst. <laughs> he, he sets me off every time. Uh, but anyway, uh, whether you donated a dollar or a thousand dollars, or donated your skills, or your time, or just a simple prayer, or a pat on the back, and I've had a lot of pat on the backs, and uh, those have all added to the success of the whole project. Uh, the entire project has been a Lord thing, Bill. Yes, it has. <coughs> I have no experience whatsoever in building a home. None. But uh, we did. Some help. Had a lot of help. But uh, with that help, you know, I, I met a gentleman come down my path, and uh, he was very essential to my success, both uh, financially and spiritually. And uh, could not have done it without them. 
Now this one put out special thanks to the fine folks at the uh, LT Simmons Trust. Uh, they guaranteed me money if we didn't have enough, and it took a major load off our back. And from that point, we did away with the, the double wide trailer sitting here on the lot. And it, it made such a difference on the whole progress, progress of the project. Um, but I have to speak a little bit about the vendors and contractors. We had so much help from everybody. Uh, oddly enough, once we announced this, uh, Bill got on the TV and got it on the news, and the phone started ringing off the hook. We had one person for framing, one person for lumber. We just had one of everything we needed. Never, ever did I get two people want to do something. And that, that's kind of... Uh, odd. But uh, the project got off on the right foot. We asked Brother Howard Horn of Howard Horn Construction to get involved and he runs a mean bulldozer. And uh, you had to see it. We literally knocked it down, put most of it in the dumpster and burned the rest of it. And uh, Howard helped us with that, with all the demolition. Uh, he cleared the lot for us, he dug all the footers and poured the concrete foundation. Uh, much thanks to him. Uh, then we were blessed to have the Tyndall Lumber and manager Terry Arvin out of Sevierville, not close, uh, to partner up with us on all the, the framing materials and they provided all that to us at cost, which is a great big deal right now with the price of everything, particularly lumber. Uh, they also uh, gave us a really neat laser cut marine emblem that you'll see when you go through the house. It, it, looked, it looked really neat. Um, with them, they suggested a uh, framing crew, Ayers uh, Residential Construction, I believe it is. And I don't know if they're here or not this morning, but Ayers uh, Framing out of Sevierville showed up and they put this house up in one day. Uh, it was well coordinated, and they were yelling instructions at each other, and it just boom. And, uh, but they knew exactly what they were doing, and, and uh, didn't charge us a penny, just blessed to have them here, and they were blessed to be here. So uh, we went from there, uh, had a donation of all the rough, uh, roof trusses which is a big deal, that's a big expense, a lot of lumber and roof trusses. And uh, those came from Lowell's trusses in Oneida. So we had people from all over the area, and even out of the area, like Sevierville. Uh, I, I gotta tell you, when we started this, I brought the committee, can y'all hear me okay? Yeah. You're brought the committee two floor plans to look at. And uh, we're gone small, it was 720 square feet. And, uh, we had 16 people there that day. One of the floor plans was the inside of this house and it had a tiny six foot porch. The other blueprint was terrible inside and had a 30 foot porch. <laughs> Out of the 16 people that voted, 15 of them picked the great uh, floor plan and one of us, Pastor, <laughs> chose the porch. Can you imagine the pastor picking out the porch? So the pastor had to have his 30 foot porch and I made a call uh, to Lau's, uh, Nathan Lau, and within minutes he had punched some computer stuff that's way over my head and he had us new trusses designed and we got us a porch. So we were able to put the two together the porch really makes the house. It gives Virgil somewhere to sit, and he seems pretty comfortable. <laughs> if, if you want to be looking for him, that's probably where you're going to find him right there. Um, after that, we came to uh, the metal roof. Uh, Patrick uh, Woods from Woods Roofing put on our metal roof for us. 
And he was the very first vendor that called and asked if he could help. Wow. So, had a boy to him for that. And uh, then I got to mention Steve Edgman did absolutely all of our electric single handed. Never, I, I saw him had a, some, some help pulling some wire one time with a bigger person than he was. But that's the only help I saw him do for the whole house. He did the whole thing for us and also donated all the light fixtures in the ceiling. Uh, Philip Redwell did all of our plumbing. One person did it all. Uh, there's just too many donors to uh, to tell you all about, but a couple more. Uh, vinyl. Uh, we got beautiful vinyl plank flooring donated by Madison Carpet in Athens. Nice as stuff money could buy. They donated every penny of it and come installed it. Uh, we've got window treatment, mini blinds, wooden mini blinds in every window. All of those came from budget blinds right here. And uh, we've got the finest marble cabinet tops. You know, I was telling somebody a while ago, this house, and this is going to sound bad, but this house is nicer than it needed to be. <laughs> but when somebody says, hey, Rick, I'm going to give you marble countertops, what are you going to do? <laughs> You're going to take marble countertops, right? And, and, and that happened through the whole thing. We've got the best of flooring. Uh, the sheetrock was, was uh, donated. All the insulation was donated. Um, but the marble, uh, that came from White's Marble Works. Um, Scanlon Lumber, they helped us with all of the uh, nice uh, hardy board siding all over the whole house. This hardy board siding, it's concrete, basically. It, it won't burn, it's 15 year warranty on all the paint, it's fantastic stuff. They helped us get all that. Uh, the good guys from A Painters, where are you at? Right there. I called them, literally saw a sign on my corner. I called them. They were here the next couple of days and says, yeah, we'll do that. And uh, I have to tell you, Randy, you told me that you and another fellow was going to do the labor and, and we had to check the other guys and it cost about $800. He wasn't gone 30 minutes and he called me and says, we're all going to help. It's going to be free. They painted the whole outside of the house. And uh, I, I know that I've forgotten somebody, and I apologize. I'm sure I have. And not that I forgot. I just don't have time to list it all. Y'all are all out there sweating, I know. But do you remember, I certainly do, when your mother used to look down her nose and shake her finger at you and say, look what you've done? Y'all remember that? Yeah. Look what y'all done. That's right. Anyway, thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brother Pastor. <coughs> Grace is something to be given away. Not something to be Amen. held on to in a closed fist. And so now we have the opportunity to give away what you all did. And I think that's real important, isn't it? Yeah. We Amen. all think. Amen. 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 I want to introduce to you now our district superintendent. Come on up here, you. Don't be a tricky flower. <laughs> Hugh Kilgore, who has come up here from Cleveland today to be here with us today. And Hugh will be helping us to consecrate the house this morning. Okay? So let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God. Grant to this house the grace of your presence, that you may be known to live within yes. and defend this household in the name of Jesus Christ and all God's people said, Amen. 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 To read to you now from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 7, 24 through 28. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man and build his house on a rock. The rain fell and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, 
but it did not fall, because it has been founded on a rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Today we dedicate a house that was built on love, Amen. built on the love of Jesus Christ, and it has the best foundation of any house anywhere. And I pray that, that it will be used by Virgil, wherever he is, <laughs> as a place for God to live with him and in him. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to invite now uh, Brother Hugh to come forward to do the consecration. My friends, I'm blessed to witness the work of God. Amen. Wayne called me over a year ago and said, Hugh, this is what is happening. And he says, I don't know where it's going to go, but I know God is in it. Can y'all say amen to yeah. that? Amen. And so I said, if God's in it, you better go as hard as you can go yeah. and follow it. And so you have done this to the glory of God amen. and to help of your brother Virgil. Amen. And so I give thanks to God for that. Above all, here's the consecration. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate this home, committing it to God's love for Virgil and for any who may reside within this building. For this we ask in God's name. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray. Loving and eternal God, bless this home. Let your love rest upon it and your presence live within it. May Virgil grow in grace and in his knowledge of you. Teach him to love as you loved and make this house a symbol of your love, your grace, and your peace to this entire community. In your holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Perfect. Come on down here. <laughs> the symbol of the cross is a symbol not just of sacrifice, but it's a symbol of victory. That's right. That God has overcome. Amen. 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 And here in this situation, we share this cross. We give it to Virgil. And may it be a sign of the Lord's blessing and God's grace and peace to be upon you and your home. Amen. 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 y'all stand here much longer in the heat. We're going to go ahead and open the house up, let you walk through the front door and out the back door. <laughs> we'll come around this way and get back on our buses, and we'll go over to the church and have a great Gus's barbecue dinner. And <laughs> anyway, we'll let you go through, and what we'll need to do it's a small house, folks, and I want you to be able to see it. So come through, you know, a few, six, eight at a time. Stella will be at the front door. Bruce we, will be at the back. We have a, a door monitor. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she's going to help us with that. But thank you all so very, very much for coming. Everybody, please go over to the church and have barbecue. We're going to have a whole lot left. Amen. So... Uh, 
<laughs> we'll get over there. But thank you again. Look at the pictures over there. Look at the video. And uh, the pastor is going to give us a final blessing and bless the food so you don't have to do it when you get over there. Go When you get over there, just go ahead and sit down and eat. You don't have to wait on anybody, okay? Let's pray. Merciful Father, loving God, we praise you and again to thank you for this day. But as we uh, venture through the house, we just ask, Lord, that uh, that your love will be revealed to everybody who passes through it, because it certainly should be. Yes. But we ask now also, Lord, that you would bless the meal to your benefit, that we would use it to your purpose. And we praise you and thank you for every grace you give us in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. Let's, uh, let's